Okay, so we're going to be talking about special revelation of God. This is one of the doctrines in theology. So for people online, I already uploaded this outline in our website, www.bbcenglish.org. Again, it's called Theological Outline, Theological Outline. So I'm not going to repeat myself again on that one. So we finished our doctrine on bibliology. We're going to continue our study on theology. Yep. So theology is the study of God, the study of God. So one of the doctrines of theology will be special revelation of God. So we're going to be talking about the special revelation of God. Okay, so what is special revelation? So let's first talk about its definition. Let's first talk about its definition. So special revelation of God, how it would be defined, is basically that God would reveal himself to specific people at specific times and places. So when God reveals himself, that's revelation, see, revealing himself. When God reveals himself, it's going to be through specifically, through some specific location, specific person at a specific time. An easy example is prophets. Why? Because they're specific people whom God reveals himself to. We also are going to see that special revelation can also be shared by everyone who reads the Bible. The Bible is also known to be a special revelation specifically to an individual. Now, as we cover the definitions right here, the first one you want to keep in mind is that special revelation cannot be learned on one's own cannot be learned by yourself cannot learn yourself look at first corinthians chapter 2 please first corinthians chapter 2 we'll look at verses 13 through 14. first corinthians chapter 2 we'll read verses 13 through 14. in the word of god right here it shows that man cannot understand unless they are guided by the holy spirit the word of god reads which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, see that? The man by himself, what happens? Receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them. Why? Because they're spiritually discerned. Another thing is that special revelation is accepted by faith. It is accepted by faith. Look at Romans chapter 10, please. Romans chapter 10, and we'll look at verse 17. Romans chapter 10, and we'll read verse 17. Special, uh, specific or special revelation has to be accepted by faith based on the reason why the secular world cannot understand God. Because they go by reason rather than by faith. You see, that's why when you try to show them what God specifically revealed to you. Hey, the rapture is coming. Hey, you're going to go to hell if you don't receive Jesus Christ for salvation. Jesus is the only way to heaven, etc. and etc. You've got to understand that people, because they go by reason rather than by faith, that's why God doesn't reveal himself specially to them. Look at Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the what? Word of God. Now remember, the Holy Spirit reveals himself spiritually through his word. We saw that 1 Corinthians 2, 13 through 14. And Romans 10, 17 says, by the word of God cometh what? Faith. Without faith, then you will never, you will never see nor understand or hear God at all. Now, there's a need for special revelation, you must understand. There is a specific need for special revelation. Let's look at Romans 10, 17 once more. We're going to look at that place again. Now, why does special revelation, why does it have a special need? The reason why there is a need for special revelation is because man's salvation depends on it. You might say, how so, Pastor? Because look at that verse. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So remember, right here, faith comes from the special revelation 
of God's Word. And thus, since special revelation comes from God's Word, you got to understand this. How are we all saved by? Faith. So that's the reason why there's a need for special revelation. Otherwise, we would not have been saved to begin with. Because how can, how did you get saved? Well, I heard the gospel. Okay, how did you hear the gospel? From somebody. Yeah, how did that person know the gospel? See, the point is because it roots back, no matter how far back you go, is to the word of God, special revelation. Here's another thing. Go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. So you got to understand right here that man cannot appreciate. They will not appreciate general revelation. Now, I did not teach on general revelation yet. I will teach that momentarily one day. But general revelation is basically God revealing himself not to one specific location, place, person, but generally to a whole group. I'll be teaching that some other time. But here's the thing. Man cannot appreciate general revelation unless he accepts special revelation first. So go to Romans chapter 1, and I'll explain. Romans chapter 1, and we'll look at verses 19 through 21. The other passage will be Psalms chapter 8, verses 3 through 5. Psalms chapter 8, verses 3 through 5. All right, so we're going to see right here why man cannot appreciate general revelation unless they're willing to accept the special revelation of God first. Because a lost man is not thankful to the true God for his creation because they don't believe in his words to begin with. So creation is an example of general revelation. God revealed himself to the world that he's real. Oh, I don't believe there is a God. No, in general revelation, to all the world through his creation. That's it. But why, won't, why does man refuse to look at creation and appreciate general revelation and say God is real? Because they first denied special revelation. See, that's why that's a special revelation is important to begin with. So look at Romans chapter 1, and we'll read verse 19. The word of God reads, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. See that? General revelation. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. See that? Through his creation. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So you'll notice right here that because specifically they themselves Denied it first. That's why what God reveals generally, they'll deny that too. Okay, so we're going to jump to Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8. So you got to understand this. It doesn't matter what general revelation you use as evidence to prove to the world. Science proves over and over again that there has to be a God. The evolution is definitely bogus. And the only answer is there had to be some intelligent designer that created us. That's the only logical explanation. But they refused to see that because specifically they themselves denied it first. That's the heart of the issue. Not the general evidence, it's specifically they themselves. So Psalms chapter 8, verse 3, it says, When I consider thy heaven, see, me first, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. See that? The creation. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. So you'll notice right here that David is able to see God revealing to him through his general revelation of creation. Because specific, specifically he himself, especially what God revealed to him, he accepted it. All right, now let's talk about the prophets who are given special revelation. The prophets who are given special revelation. Now, this, mu this one is going to be pretty interesting. Now, even, uh, I'm very surprised, but even Berkeley <laughs> taught this. So you'd be surprised yourself with Berkeley sometimes that they might be teaching some truths that regular Christian pastors don't even know about. You'd be surprised. <laughs> so in Berkeley, they said that the formula for a prophet is thus saith the Lord, actually, which is true. So let's talk about the prophets given special revelation now. As we discuss these prophets who are given special revelation, we're going to see 
The first point is the formula. The formula of the right prophet who is given special revelation. This is a key phrase, thus saith the Lord. That's the key phrase. So if the prophet does not have this key phrase, then he is not a true prophet of God. Now there are over 413 verses. 413 wow, verses. That's how powerful it is. With this exact phrase for special revelation. Now these are the verses that if you receive the notes, then you got it marked down. For those of you who don't have the notes, you're going to have to rewind the video and then write all these verses down. I'm going to go through it quickly. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. Joshua chapter 7, verse 13. Judges chapter 6, verse 8. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 27. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 5. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 31. 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 10. 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verse 23, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 7, and Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2. Okay, so we're going to look at a few of these passages. So let's jump to Exodus 4. Obviously, we can't look at all of them, but let's look at a few of them right here. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 22. Now, it makes me wonder what your modern Bibles say. This is a special formula for a prophet. Thus saith the Lord. I mean, what a powerful, authoritative phrase from the Lord God Almighty. This is what God is telling you. And the way to start it as a great intro is, thus saith the Lord. Okay, we're going to look at Exodus chapter 4 and verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So you'll notice right here that when Moses spoke to a very authoritative figure, a powerful emperor like Pharaoh, Moses, he started out, thus saith the Lord, to an authoritative, authoritative figure like him, showing the authority of God Almighty above him. We're going to look at, let's jump to 1 Kings 11, 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11, and we'll look at verse 31. 1 Kings chapter 11, and we'll look at verse 31. Notice the word of God says right here, And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee. So you'll notice right here that the word of the Lord is based on that specific note. Now, this is a very interesting thing which you probably don't know about. But uh, this is not written in your notes, but I want to jump to 1 Kings chapter 13. 1 Kings chapter 13. What I like about this passage right here is that this prophet was tested by the Lord to see if he was going to hear the word of God. Because look at right here. We're going to look at verse... 15, then he said unto him, uh, 1 Kings 13, verse 15, then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, and he may, eat uh, he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Okay, so notice that this man deceived this young man. This old man deceived this young man that an angel spoke to him that God said that you can actually eat and drink with him. But actually, that young man knew that the Lord told him not to eat and drink on the way. But he believed the old man's lying words, and then look at verse 19. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. Now look at verse 21. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord. Now, do you see a difference here? Verse 18, he told them, the, the old man claimed 
The Lord told me to tell you that it's okay. You can stop and eat and drink on the way. But now in verse 21, the old man who lied switched the tone to the formula, thus saith the Lord, showing that this is real. For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast out into the way. So this is a very serious story that you need to understand. This old man lied to the young man saying that you can stop and eat on the way even though the young man knew that God told him not to stop and eat on the way. And then what happened as a consequence? The Lord saw that the young man disobeyed him, and then the Lord told the old prophet, okay, I want you to tell him that because he disobeyed my word, that he's going to be killed by a lion along the way. And then the old man switched from lying into telling the truth and told the young man, thus saith the Lord. Now, why did God kill that young man? I mean, that young man, he was innocent. He was just deceived, right? The problem was this. That young man was a prophet of God, and he should have known better. Here's the thing, folks, is that you Christians have a special revelation from God, so you should know better. Now, here's the thing. When some heretic online and some pastor, some false prophet, says, this is what God says, this is what God teaches, and you fall for that, it's going to hurt your life and damage you. And that's why you got to keep your ears open on the genuine and the right formula from God. Yeah. Well, how am I going to find out, preacher? Right here. Isn't yeah. this the formula? Amen. How many times does it say, thus saith the Lord? Amen. Over 413 times here. Did you notice the, uh, the different addresses? When the old man lied, he didn't say, thus saith the Lord. But when the old man started to tell the truth, now he said, Thus saith the Lord. See that? Look at that switch. All right. We're also going to turn to uh, Ezekiel chapter 4. Ezekiel chapter 4. We're going to look at Ezekiel 4. And then if the cameraman can keep an eye out on the screen and the vo sound as well. Uh -huh. And the sound as well, then it doesn't echo back and forth. Every once in a while, it's good to do that. The devil always, he just send some kind of weird thing. <laughs> All right, the prophet, when he's given a special revelation from God, this is very important. He can be known to do strange actions. Now, this is important to understand. Why is that? Because there's a lot of people who don't listen to the word of the Lord because they see as a preacher as being strange to them. Oh, he's not educated. He, doesn't, he didn't graduate from a seminary. Oh, this guy, he's too young. Oh, this guy, he's too old. I don't like the tone of his voice when he was yelling. Look at that church. It's so small. There's hardly anybody here. This is weird. This is strange. When you talk like that, you automatically assume that must not be a right preacher then, a right prophet. I'm going to show you some wild things. You ready? All right, we're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 12, and then we're going to read from verses 12 through 15 right here. All right, you want me to show you something weird? If you see your pastor doing this, <laughs> you won't come back. Trust me, you won't come back. <laughs> Look at Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 12. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with what? Dung that cometh out of man in their sight. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, Behold, my soul hath not been polluted, for, for, for from my youth up even till now have I not eaten of that which dieth of itself, or is torn in pieces, neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. Now look at that. So you'll notice right here that Ezekiel, he freaked out right here. He says, I have not put anything abominable in my mouth before, Lord, and he's eating his own dung. If you see your pastor eating his own poop, you think you're going to come back to church? In the middle of church service, like start doing that? What do you think you guys are going to do? Yeah, you're not going to come back. And guess what? I would leave too. <laughs> I think he's psycho. But see that 
the Lord can tell the, uh, the man of God, the preacher, to do some strange things. Yeah. So just because some, some trolls out there will take some, will chop off some clips of Bible-believing preachers doing some strange or crazy or in their angry moments or stuff like that, that just makes people think, oh, he must not be a true prophet of God. He must not be a true preacher. Ah, man, you ain't seen nothing yet, man. If you think that's scary, what those people do, Bible-believing preachers do, you ain't seen nothing yet, folks. Look at Isaiah chapter 20. Isaiah chapter 20. We're going to look at verse 2. Isaiah chapter 20. We're going to look at verses 2 through 3. Now, notice right here that the Word of God reads, At the same time spake the Lord by Isaiah the son of Amos, saying, Go and loose the sackcloth from off thy loins, and put off thy shoe from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. And the Lord said, Like as my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and wonder upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia. But naked, folks. He was but naked. Telling the word of the Lord. <laughs> All right, 1 Kings chapter 1. 1 Kings chapter 11, excuse me, 1 Kings chapter 11. Ain't that something, man? 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 29 to 31. Well, I don't like that. I don't want to go back to that preacher. Why? Why? Oh, he pointed me out. He pointed his finger at me. Yeah, you better thank God that he wasn't preaching naked in front of you. <laughs> you might say, oh, pastor, stop saying stupid stuff like that. You must be a heretic. I'm reading from the Word of God. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Hey, 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 are you listening to the formula? Thus saith the Lord. Isn't that what Isaiah did, folks? Yes. All right, look at 1 Kings chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 29. Verse 29. See, the special revelation is important where you don't get deceived by a false prophet. And we saw the verse as a serious crime. Uh, following a lie of a false prophet, a false word from the Lord. But you also see the price of following the truth as well. So you got to keep your lenses open, folks. Oh, wow. All right, let's look at 1 Kings chapter 11, and we're going to look at verses 29 through 31. All right, let's look at some more strange things. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment, and they too were alone in the field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him, and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel. Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee. Well, I don't like that preacher. He was ripping me apart in the sermon. You better thank God he didn't literally take your clothes off of you and ripped it in twelve pieces while he was preaching at you. Hey, hey. All right, we're going to look at 2 Kings chapter 1, uh, not 2 Kings 1, uh, 1 Kings chapter 20, please. 1 Kings chapter 20. 1 Kings chapter 20, we'll look at verses 35 through 42. 1 Kings chapter 20. And we're going to look at verses 35 to 22. Man, I, I'm, I'm enjoying a great time. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying myself right here. Some people might just walk away from church after this. Oh, man, Pastor Kim, he's saying weird stuff of what preachers, biblical preachers did back then. <laughs> Look at verse 35. And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor in the word of the Lord, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. Brother Robert, punch me in the face, please. <laughs> you think he's going to punch me at the face, folks? No, he's not going to do that, right? He wouldn't dare. He wouldn't go, man, pastor, I respect you too much. I wouldn't do that. What if I said to him, because you disobeyed, you know, God's going to punish you. Look at the, verse 36. Then said he unto him, because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. <laughs> now look at verse 37, then he found another man, and he said, smite me, I pray thee. And the man smote him, so then smiting me wounded him. <laughs> the other guy, listen, all right, I'll hit you. <laughs> my, my, folks, wow. See that, what the Lord might do? Now, you think that's weird? Go to Hosea 1. Hosea chapter 1. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to listen to that, pastor. Why? 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 Isn't he teaching you from the word of the Lord? Well, because he ain't married. 
Well, you better thank God he didn't marry a whore. <laughs> what if he married a whore? Would that make it better? What if he married a prostitute? <laughs> you might say, oh, pastor. Look at Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beeri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Look at verse 2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, great way to start the preaching at the book of Hosea. The great way. Go and take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredoms, departing from the Lord. That's what he told Hosea to do. <laughs> Good night, man. Oh, my goodness. What if I married a prostitute, huh? I think I'd have members leaving the church after that, right? <laughs> Look at this, folks. So what's the importance of this lesson? The importance of this lesson, no matter, people are very gullible online. So this is what I'm going to stress. No matter how crazy they would depict a Bible-believing uh, preacher, especially trolls and the uh, liberal news media, trying to take out controversial statements and actions from them. And yeah, maybe Pastor Gene Kim was going like this, ah, and being sarcastic, and then chopping up those videos to make me look strange and weird. Let me tell you something, folks. Don't you dare think that that's not of God. I'm very mild compared to these preachers. How do you judge them? Do you judge them by the tone of their voice, by their strange actions? Or do you judge them by, thus saith the Lord? Look at the word of God, the Bible, the Bible. Please look at the Bible, people. Don't look at their Bibles nowadays, sadly. Okay, we're going to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 34, please. 2 Chronicles, and we're going to look at chapter 34. 2 Chronicles 34. And we're going to look at verse 22, 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verse 22. Now, God can use any prophet. He's used many people ranging with, oh, there's so many right here. Uh, I won't write down all the verses, sorry. So write them down, folks. 2 Chronicles 34, verse 22. Notice that he will range it with women, 2 Chronicles 34, 22. And Hilkiah and they that the king had appointed went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikveth, uh, the son of Hasra, keeper of the wardrobe. He also done, uh, he uses anybody, folks, to show his word. Wild looking men as well. Look at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. You don't think God can use a rock if he wanted to? <laughs> he can use anything, yeah, folks. So you'll notice that the Lord, he doesn't pick out well-dressed, good-looking, smiling preachers whose teeth is all white, whose church is about 1,000 or more people, and then he just smiles at you in the tone of his voice when he reads the Bible in a soothing voice. That's not the kind of preacher God uses all the stinking time, you got to understand. He could use some of those people, don't get me wrong, but you gotta understand this, God uses anybody. So you can't judge by outward appearance, and that is so important, especially people online. What if I was only five uh, subscribers? Are you gonna watch me? What if I was younger than I look now? Are you gonna watch me? What if I didn't draw on the board? Are you still gonna watch me? What if I didn't put a catchy title? Are you still gonna watch me? Or are you just watching me because I got 85,000 subscribers or something like that? Are you watching me because I put my credentials at the bottom to legitimize myself so that people don't judge me or how I dress, etc.? How about that, folks? All right, so let's look at Mark chapter 1 and verse 6. Look at right here. The Word of God reads, And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey. Wow. <laughs> look at 1 Samuel 19. 1 Samuel 19. Didn't you know he even used a crazy idiot? No. Yeah, he used a crazy idiot. And I literally mean that, a crazy idiot. <laughs> God uses anybody. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the great I am that I am? Come on, folks. He split the Red Sea in half. Yeah, amen. <laughs> he used crazy idiots. 1 Samuel chapter 19. 
And then look at verses 23, 24. Notice what Saul did. And he went thither to Naioth and Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naioth and Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also, and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, is Saul also among the prophets? Look at this. Saul was just messing up in conundrum and stupidity right here. Like a mentally, he was just acting like a person who lost his mind. And yet the Lord was speaking through him. <laughs> Let's look at, uh, hey, let me, let me put at another level. Didn't you know he can use evil men? <gasps> no, blasphemy, yeah. He can use evil men. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, don't, don't listen to Schofield stuff. And well, Why? Oh, it's because uh, he did this and that and that, blah, 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 blah. Is anything too hard for God? Come on, man. He can use anybody for his glory. Look at Joshua chapter 13 for crying out loud. Point is, what are you judging them by? Are you judging them by uh, on how good or evil or wild looking or good looking, uh, crazy idiot or sane, or are you judging them by, come on, come on, come on, come on. How many times? Thus, say it. This is basic discipleship. Basic discipleship, folks. I am going to harp on this over and over again because one day in life, the devil's going to tempt you. You're going to see something online or someone's going to fool you with some graphic art screen and make it look professional and make the preacher look nice. That's why some of these preachers who look like little babies, they have to grow a beard so that they can fool the people. Oh, yeah, I'm older than I look, you know. So these idiots, these wicked people right there, they want to deceive souls by outward appearances and people get so caught up with that. When they got to look at, thus saith the Lord. All right? People get away from Bible believers because they don't like how, I don't like how he was being sarcastic, being mean, or too young, too old, blah, 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 blah. Thus saith the Lord. Well, you know, he was divorced and remarried, and, you know, he slipped up right here and there and there. Ah, 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 ah. Look at the Bible. Who cares? Who cares about the person, right? I didn't come for the person. I came for, thus saith the Lord. That's who I came for. Look at Joshua chapter 13 and verse 22. Look at right here. Balaam, also the son of Beor, the soothsayer. Did you hear that, folks? He's a soothsayer. He's a soothsayer. Part of the occult. Did the children of Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by them? Right? But look, he prophesied at Numbers 23. Look at Numbers chapter 23, verse 5. I'm going to go there quickly and read ahead. But in Numbers chapter 23, verse 5, this evil man, this soothsayer, in verse 5, and the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. The Lord can use the soothsayer. How about that? Uh, he used poets as well. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, verse 36. We got Mark chapter 12. Verse 36, he used poets as well. So when people are quoting poetry in the Bible, don't just think, oh, it's just figurative language. No, the Lord's probably putting a doctrinal prophetic statement right there. A lot of people just want to make the Bible figurative, but in that poetry, it may be something doctrinal. Mark 12, verse 36, for David himself he said by the Holy Ghost, See, he was just singing a song, poetry. But this was by the Holy Ghost. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, he also used, look at Luke chapter 1, verse 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 1. He has also used priests. He has also used priests. So you'll notice that he used prestigious people. He used people of art. He used evil people, wild-looking people. See, is anything too hard for God? He'll even use a professional person, too. You know, some people, uh, they just get upset that, well, you know, uh, because that pastor is well-dressed and his church is big, he must not be right with God. Who says that? You're looking at the outward appearance again. See that? You're looking at the outward appearance again. You got to look at how many times the, say it, the Lord. 
All right, look at Luke chapter 1, verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things, which are most surely believed among us. Now jump to verse 67. Verse 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied. See that? He was prophesying. But you'll notice that Zacharias, he was a priest. If you look at verse 5, verse 5, Zacharias was a priest. Okay, we're also going to look at Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. He even used presidents. Wait, 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 wait. Pastor, no, hey, hey, is anything too hard for God? Is anything too hard for God? He can even use the president if he wanted to. Look at that, folks. Look at Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Well, they messed up here and there and there. Look, is anything too hard for God? You're, you're always judging on the person, and you're always judging on the outward appearances rather than the Word of God. Come on, come on, come on. All right. Daniel chapter 6, verse 2. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was what? First. Didn't you know you're reading a president's book right now? <laughs> you're reading a president's book. So Daniel was the first among these presidents. And then in Daniel, I mean, not Daniel, but in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, Jesus Christ, he said that it was spoken by Daniel the prophet. So see, he was given special revelation. Okay, we're also going to look at, well, we actually read that, so I jumped ahead, but you can write this one down. And for those of you who have the notes in, you're pretty much saved. First Kings chapter 13, verses 18 through 21. First Kings chapter 13, verse 18 through 21. So, let me draw some lines right here. We see right here in 1 Kings chapter 13, verse uh, 21, the address of thus saith the Lord is usually from the right prophet. So you have to be very careful of false prophets. And then I mentioned the verse before. The code is what? Thus saith the Lord. And if the prophet does not give this formula, and where do you find this formula? Thus saith the Lord. It's the Bible. The Bible is thus saith the Lord. So if a person doesn't go by the Bible, then you know that it's not from the Word of God. That's 1 Kings, which we read before, chapter 13, verse 18 through 21. It's talking about that young man that was killed by a lion because he listened to the lies of the old man who did not give the formula, thus saith the Lord. Okay, look at 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. All right, another sign of a false prophet. Not only will he not go by the word of the Lord, okay, thus saith the Lord, he will use great swelling words. Great swelling words. Oh, I love that preaching today. Why? Oh, the words that he spoke just brought comfort to my heart and soul. Oh, is it great swelling words? Don't get me wrong. Preacher should comfort, encourage, motivate. But my goodness, if that's all you're hearing and you never heard a conviction, a day in your life, the preacher never spanked you in the sermon, a day in your life, then he's not just using comforting words, he's deliberately using great swelling words. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, a sign of a false prophet. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Why? Verse 3, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. See that? Look at verse 15. They followed the way of Balaam. Verse 16. Forbade the madness of that. Verse 17. Reserve the darkness forever. Verse 18. For when they speak great what? Swelling words of vanity. Okay, let's also look at Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. Here's another important thing. A sign of a false prophet is when his prophecy fails. That is very important. Do you know how many prophecies and then you hear from people today on television, worldwide television? Oh, yeah, I, I, an angel spoke to me and he told me that I needed $5,000 or $50,000 to build up this 
funds for the school or something like that. TV evangelists always proclaiming that. Not only that, the internet is filled with that. Didn't you know that? The internet is filled with that. The date of the rapture is what? How many times have you heard that? And then it didn't come to pass. Ah, then what happens? False prophet immediately. False prophet immediately. Hey, hey. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Doesn't matter if the person has a heart that loves Jesus and wants the rapture to happen. Trust me, I want the rapture to happen more than anybody too. I want it to happen right now. All right? I would love for it to happen right now. But the thing is this, folks, it doesn't matter how much they love Jesus or whatnot. If that person says something that the rapture is going to be this date and that date and that fails, then what? He's a false preacher. You'll notice in my videos when I talk about rapture dates, I always discourage and warn you about the dates. I always tell you guys that. I am open to the possibility because I'm not a bigoted, closed-minded person. Of course, I give them a chance, an opportunity. I hope they're right. But you got to realize this, is that it's not certain from the Word of God. And things that are not certain from the Word of God, you have to take it with a grain of salt and be careful. All right, we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or thou shalt speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. See that? All right, another thing is Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. Now, this is very important. If a prophecy is true, aha, pay attention, folks. Let's say that his prophecy is true. It's still wrong. Why? Because it, it does not follow the word of the Lord. Now, that is very important to understand. It does not follow the word of God. Well, you know, I saw this vision, and because I saw this vision, this prophecy came true and whatnot. Oh, yeah, but, you know, if it does not follow the word of God, then you know what that is? It doesn't matter if it came to pass and it came out to be true. God considers that to be wrong. Why is that, Pastor? Because use your head, please. Don't you think Satan can have a pretty good prediction of the future too? What do you think? He's a dummy? He can predict what can happen in the future and then give the person the prophecy to predict that future. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder. See that? That's why you've got to be careful of this vision, this dream, and this prophecy stuff. And the sign or the wonder come to pass. Oh, it did happen, Pastor. Well, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the word of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cling unto him. Now look at 1 Corinthians 14. I have to show you this one. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. If you claim to have a true prophecy through the vision or through the dream or through some kind of revelation that you're giving, specific special revelation that you're giving, you got to realize this. Paul said, 1 Corinthians 14, 37, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, all right, if you think you're spiritual, you have the right prophecy, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the what? Commandments of the Lord. Paul says, you got to go by my writings. You got to make sure that you go by what I wrote, the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 13, 1 through 5, as well as 1 Corinthians 14, 37. So you got to realize this. Yeah, maybe it did came to pass what you dreamed, uh, the vision that you saw. Uh, the pro or any kind of, sp uh, this is talking about special revelation. See, this is a subject. Special revelation. It doesn't matter what special revelation is. 
When it doesn't follow the word of the Lord, sorry, it may come out to be true, discounted. But it's from God. It's Christian. It's not demonic. Yeah, but what did the Bible show? A person can speak even in the name of the Lord. First Kings 13, he claimed it to be the word of God. So this is the important part. The last point, this is the most important part. And hey, you know, a lot of people might not like me for teaching this, but because I love you guys and because this is... Very important as a Bible believer, I'm going to teach this. This last point is important. Modern days, a special revelation. Modern days, a special revelation. All right, we're going to look at these verses. Look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. And then we're going to look at chapter 22, verse 18. Chapter 22, verse 18. Is the word of God the final authority? Is thus saith the Lord, his word the final authority? Or what you prophesy or some kind of special revelation you saw or you heard? What is the final authority? Can I have your answer? What is it? It's the word of God, right? Thus saith the Lord. If that's the case, then we're going to look at these cases right here. Revelation chapter 1 verse 19. Well, you know, I know what I felt. I know what I saw. You got to understand this, folks. Even secular scholars know the experience that you saw, felt, or heard, didn't you ever dream of something that you sworn was real? That you were eating the food and it tasted really good? Yeah. You, you got to realize this. Just because it just feels and you, the experience is so real does not make it real. Even what you dream of eating a food and you could have sworn that it was real eating it is fake. Do you go by the, your flesh, see the senses of your flesh, or by the word of God? Revelation 119, here's what I'm driving at. Let's start here. Modern days. What about special revelation in modern days? What is it, Pastor? It's not going to be through these kind of special revelation person to person. Revelation 119. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be what? Hereafter. Now, when John's writing the word, what's the title of the book? The title of the book? Boom. Revelation. There it is. Visions, uh, dreams, hearing audible voices, etc., etc., prophecies. Revelation, right? Write the things. Revelation consists of what? The things which shall be what? Hereafter, future, right? Is John going to write the things of the future? Yes or no? Yes. Then look at chapter 22, verse 18. When he writes the things of the future, look at chapter 22 and verse 18. What did he say right here? For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Correct? He's going to write the things which shall be hereafter, the future, right? When he writes the things of the future, you can't add, people. You cannot add more after that. Oh, you, how dare you? No, let's keep reading here. If any man shall add unto these what? Things. Remember, write the what in chapter 1, verse 19. Write the what? Things. The same things he was writing. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Look at that. How about that? So modern days, he doesn't show it to you person to person. You're saying then there's no special revelation from God. You're taking away the joy and my blessing and, hey man, hey man, look at 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1. You do have special revelation. But the problem is, why don't you use these more often? You go so much by what you dream and feel, the sensations of your flesh, rather than these two wonderful gifts the Lord has given to you. You know what they are? Your testimony and the Bible. That's what they are, your testimony and the Bible. We're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19 through 21. The Word of God reads right here, We have also a more sure word of what? Prophecy. Look at verse 20, knowing this first that no prophecy of the what? Scripture is of any private interpretation. Look at that. Now keep your hand here, keep your hand here. Revelation 19.10. So the word of God is your special revelation. And Revelation 19.10 says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the what? Testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the what? Spirit of prophecy. Do you have the testimony of Jesus Christ in you? Then you are prophesying. 
So when you have the testimony of Jesus Christ in you, what are you doing? Oh, you know, I got saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your testimony, right? What are you prophesying? I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to burn in hell. I'm going to get raptured before the tribulation, etc., etc. That's what you're testifying from your testimony. You're prophesying. Now return to 2 Peter 1. I like this. Verse 17. Mark this down. I can't write this, but I want you get people to mark this down. This is important. Verse 17. Well, I want to go by voices. I want to go by voices. Well, I'm going to tell you something, folks. I got a better, I got a better special revelation than you. And I've gotten more blessed than you did, unfortunately, then. I want you to be as blessed as me. Look at verse 17. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. See that special revelation of direct audible voice and even vision. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the Holy Mount. Right? That kind of special revelation, what's above it? Look at verse 19. That was wonderful. But Peter says, this is even better. Verse 19. We have also a what? More sure word of prophecy. Wow. Ain't that a blessing? What is that? The Bible. Verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. The Bible is better than hearing audible voices, folks, than seeing Jesus through a vision or some kind of stuff that, uh, that you're going through. What's better than all that, Peter said, is the word of God. Thus saith the Lord, the word of God. Why? Because it's a culmination of all prophecies, of all prophets throughout Amen. all time. Nothing can trump that. All right, so let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for tonight's discipleship. Dismiss us now with your blessing. Bless the next Bible study we're going to have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone, without works, through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great, then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you can say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray.
Amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.